Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I wanted to see what being funny is like, so I decided to become a comedian. So, fire, right? They say that fire is dangerous, but fire is also the color yellow. If you ask me, I say that orange is a more dangerous color than yellow, and it doesn't even rhyme with anything. Huh? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I need to practice my routine. Squirrel Jokes is the episode where Spongebob tells jokes about squirrels on stage, which everybody finds funny, but greatly offends Sandy. Like Murray Man and Barnacle Boy 3, this episode aired on September 14, 2001, and this episode sees the return of having a stage at the Krusty Krab for a stage show. This concept was first introduced in episode 20, Culture Shock, from season 1, and in that episode, they held a talent show. This time around, the stage is used for a comedy show. After this episode, it's never done again, which really blows in my opinion. I think there's so much more potential for this to be done in future episodes. They can do things like an actual celebrity performance or maybe a school concert or something like that. I don't know. This episode is also the second time that Spongebob is shown drying up in Sandy's tree dome without a water helmet. The first being episode 3, she had the tree dome from season 1. And because of that, I have my own complicated history with this episode where it was something I attempted to avoid watching for a bit. Despite of that, this is another episode from this season I don't see people talk about too much. With that in mind, let's watch this episode and see if we can figure out why that is. So the episode starts up and the Krusty Krab has a new floor show called The Comedy Krab. Mr. Krabs introduced the first act, Dougie Williams, who throws pies at everybody. Spongebob came out on stage and tried to tell jokes about things at work, like salt shakers, tomatoes, and forks, but they were so boring and the crowd thought he was horrible at jokes. They had it coming. They opened umbrellas indoors. That's bad luck. The crowd started booing Spongebob, so he tried looking around for something he could make witty comments about. He looked at Sandy's features and started making jokes about them, like her teeth, her fur, and how they smell as a result of hibernation. The crowd started to like these, but not Sandy, and the worst slash funniest joke of all was saying that it takes more than one squirrel to change a light bulb because they're so darn stupid. Everybody loved this, except Sandy. Backstage, Mr. Krabs was impressed and decided to do the joke night again, with Spongebob as the headliner, making him clean up after the show. You don't need to do the joke night again to make him clean up after the show. You're already making him do that now. Sandy came backstage and told Spongebob how she was offended at the jokes. Spongebob said he was teasing and said that it's important to laugh at ourselves once in a while. And Sandy agreed. But the next day, everybody else around her started to belittle her by saying she actually is stupid, showing that they had all taken the jokes to heart and Sandy was not happy about this. Later that night, right before the show, Sandy talked to Spongebob saying that others started ridiculing her and Patrick even did it right in front of Spongebob. Sandy asked Spongebob to tell other jokes, and Spongebob agreed even though he was hesitant to do so. When he came on stage, Spongebob tried telling other jokes, but the crowd was confused and only wanted to hear the squirrel jokes. Spongebob was nervous and had to make the choice between his friends or his career. Uh, your career is making Krabby Patties. Spongebob dropped the mic and went backstage, but came back out with fake buck teeth and started telling the squirrel jokes again, much to Sandy's annoyance. Spongebob gave a special thanks to Sandy for being an inspiration, but the crowd was still laughing at her, despite Spongebob saying that they were laughing with her. Sandy was not happy about this, but Spongebob concluded his act and went backstage again. He found a note from Sandy inviting him to the tree dome the next day to celebrate. Spongebob thought that this meant he got to keep his career and his friends. Your career is making Krabby Patties. The next day, Spongebob arrived with flowers and found Sandy looking, talking, and acting like a typical hillbilly, clearly being the influence for Narlene that would appear later in Camp Coral, clearly looking like this to show how his jokes described her as. She started doing things like gluing Spongebob to the sea, taking off his water helmet so he almost dries up, and forgetting that he needs water. She puts a hose in his mouth and loads him up with so much water that he fills up the whole tree dome. Spongebob finally got the message and knew to not tell any more squirrel jokes. But what happened to the tree though? Later that night, Spongebob told another joke about squirrels, but this one was inoffensive. He then started making other jokes like how sponges are even stupider than squirrels because sponges have no bones, and crabs are so cheap they can't even pay attention. Oh, 
The crowd laughs at that, but when the teacher says to pay attention, and I ask how much that'll cost because I don't have my wallet, I get in trouble for it. He also made other jokes about fish and starfish, which were also good, and Sandy was happy that Spongebob learned his lesson, and the episode ends. So that was Squirrel Jokes, and I feel like there's quite a lot to say about it. I'll start off with my own personal experiences. I remember when I saw this episode when I was young, and Spongebob started to dry up in the tree dome and talk hoarsely. I was a little on edge about that, because I wasn't completely over the first time I had seen that exact scenario back in Season 1 with T at the Tree Dome. There was one time when I saw this episode, I turned off the TV when Spongebob started to dry up, and then I turned it back on right as the episode was closing. There was another time I turned it off at the exact same spot, and when I turned it back on, it was right at the end of that scene when Spongebob ended up filling up the whole Tree Dome, and then I watched the rest of the episode from there on out. Eventually I got over this and started watching the episode as normal, like always. I think something that helped with this was that after this episode, Spongebob and or Patrick didn't dry up in the tree dome again until episode 254, Yours, Mine, and Mine from season 7. And by that point, I was watching all Spongebob episodes without thinking about any flaws with the show, even when the show was at its worst at the time. Now with that out of the way, I had to make some other comments about this episode that I previously didn't have time for. When Sandy was made fun of and should have bought two different deodorants, that's a bit less of an insult if you ask me. I always buy three things of deodorant when I go to the store so I don't have to remember to buy it whenever I go to the store. Also, in terms of Sandy's comment where she said, Stupidity isn't a virus, but it sure is spreading like one! That episode premiered in 2001, and that was a quote roughly 19 years ahead of its time, huh? I don't know if cartoons predicting the future is supposed to be a good thing or a bad thing. I also hate to ruin everybody's childhood, but Mr. Krabs said that the headliner was the one who cleans up after the show. Sorry, but that's not true. The headliner is the main act of the show. Sometimes with an act or two performing before whoever is considered the main event. I didn't know that until last year when I went to a concert and the main act was the last performance of the show. But now, we have to get into the actual quality of this episode. There are definitely some funny things from this episode. I do like some of the squirrel jokes said in the first act of the episode, but I didn't laugh at them as hard on this latest rewatch compared to when I was 14 years old. The ending is the best part of the episode in my opinion, because the jokes I made about everybody there are the best. My favorite lines from the whole episode are, I got no bones, and soap, soap, what is soap? I also like Spongebob's funny face with the buck teeth in the middle of the episode. There are some nice character moments in this one too. I like how Spongebob does try to tell other jokes even though he didn't think the crowd would like them. I like how Sandy was the only person who didn't boo Spongebob when his first routine wasn't going so well. I also like the ending when Mr. Krabs isn't offended when Spongebob cracks jokes about Mr. Krabs' cheapness and admits he is indeed cheap. This episode also has a good moral that it's important to laugh at yourself every once in a while. I remember I did that a lot back in high school because I wanted to be thought of as the class clown. That didn't work, but I still had fun making my friends laugh back in high school. It also shows that jokes shouldn't be taken to heart. Just because something is funny, that doesn't necessarily mean that's a way to live. Usually a comedy routine is there for a comedian to put on a show to give people a good laugh and memory. And obviously, just because something funny is said on stage, it's to make people laugh, not to make people open a new leaf. I could be on stage and say that if I had to choose between committing larceny or going on the bane of my existence and say that I would choose larceny, but something like that isn't supposed to be taken literally. It's supposed to make people laugh, and that's it. It's just over-exaggeration to show how much I despise the thing I hate the most. Larceny would put me in jail, so therefore, that means I won't be doing anything that I just mentioned. Except reiterate that this episode has a good moral. But if I'm being honest, I think that's all this episode is going for it. I will admit the funniest scenes from this episode didn't make me laugh as much as the funniest lines from other episodes we've talked about so far. I've seen some people say this episode is rather mean-spirited, but I don't think that's entirely true. Spongebob telling the jokes may have gone a bit too far, like when he said squirrels are so darn stupid, but that was really the worst of it in my opinion. Most of his jokes were rather lighthearted, and nobody was actually pointing and laughing at Sandy's face. The Bikini Bottomites making fun of Sandy happens rather quickly and doesn't drag on. Spongebob does try to please Sandy by telling other jokes, even though that didn't work and he went back to doing the funny shit instead.
If this episode was truly that mean-spirited, he wouldn't have tried to tell other jokes at all, and Spongebob wasn't aware that everybody else in Bikini Bottom were making fun of Sandy because they took the jokes to heart, and because he didn't see them teasing her. Except for the part where he saw Patrick, but he just brushed that off because Patrick's his best friend. And Spongebob got his comeuppance when Sandy treated him badly when she acted exactly how his jokes described her. Well, not exactly. Sandy's teeth still aren't big enough for a plane to be landed on them. But despite that, I don't think this episode is mean-spirited like some people say it is. There are some other episodes from this very season that are much worse, like episodes 52, Grandma's Kisses, and 74, I'm With Stupid. In both of those episodes, the characters just laugh at Spongebob for no good reason, and it goes on and on and on, and no character felt remorse for it or even tried to make it up to the character. At least Spongebob tried to make up for his mistake to Sandy in this episode. You can argue that episode 38, Fools in April from season 1, is more mean-spirited than this. While you wouldn't be wrong, Squidward still immediately showed remorse in that episode when Spongebob ran away crying. Sure, Squidward's prank was definitely uncalled for, but that was also worse than Spongebob's jokes about squirrels. And Squidward still tried to apologize in that episode, unlike Grandma's kisses. Even if Spongebob didn't outright apologize for teasing Sandy, Spongebob still tried to make things up to her and tell other jokes, and then learns his lesson when Sandy fills him up with the hose. So in terms of this episode's attitude, I think it's better than some people say it is. Now the comedy though, I personally think this episode isn't super funny like other episodes this season. I wouldn't call this a bad episode because there were definitely some humorous scenes, but this is one of the weaker episodes from season 2 in my opinion. I would definitely choose to watch this compared to something like Grandma's Kisses or I'm With Stupid, but would probably choose to watch other episodes like episodes 43, Squid's Day Off, or 59, No Free Rides from this same season. This episode still has more going for it compared to other episodes, so I'd say this episode is overall just average. Squirrel Jokes is a fine episode. There are some funny scenes, some good character moments, and a great moral. I don't think it's mean-spirited, and it definitely could be worse. But I also don't think it did too much to make it stand out more compared to other episodes this season. So I'd say it's just a bit more okay in general. However, I think jokes like that are what I need to make my routine better. So, bears, right? Why are they always growling? I mean, hello? Ever heard of words? I guess not. Oh well, I don't need to be a comedian. There are easier ways to have a sense of humor. <laughs>